think today might be the day. The reason I say that is because this morning I got up and I thought I'll do some work today but I'm also just gonna chill out as well. You know, do a few things that I want to do instead of just work. Take a look at that. What I did was I thought, let's just, let's just have a look at this. Let's just fiddle around with the jet engine, with the, the controller, you know, that kind of thing. And this is what ended up happening. I just started pushing buttons on the controller. I found how to bind it. I didn't find that before. I saw an option to bind it to the receiver because I wasn't sure if it was connected to it. And I couldn't quite get it working, so I went on the computer again. I found a little bit of instructions on how to bind. I wasn't doing it right. It was a weird thing where you had to take the battery out, push the button, put the battery in. You get the idea. It's one of those things. I managed to get a binding. Once this controller was bound to the receiver, there was then a connection through to the ECU, and therefore I could, on the touch screen, I finally went through the process to sort of set up the radio, and it was Basically, you know, I clicked a few buttons and what ended up happening actually was the engine kind of, there's no fuel going into it. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not going to run it on the kitchen table just in case it takes off or something. So what I'll do is take it into the workshop, hopefully get the fuel lines connected up again. But yeah, it's interesting how a fresh approach can sort of, you know, just allow you to, to get a different angle of attack on a problem. You know, you it's, it's one of those things like... When you're in a bad mindset, you don't know it's a bad mindset, which looking back on yesterday, it probably was. I was in a rush, I wanted to get it filmed for you, you know, so therefore I'm, you know, quote unquote, multitasking. Multitasking is something that just doesn't exist, even though people think they can. So yeah, so fresh mindset today, going well so far, and it isn't even nine o'clock. Now you see those two LEDs, the blue and the red? Well, yesterday there was just a flashing blue. I don't know what that meant, but it, but I know what it didn't mean. It didn't mean that the receiver was connected to the controller. Now we have solid red, solid blue. It's, it's bound, binded, binded, bound, connected to the receiver. Now there's still a lot of guessing here, like the instructions, I know I've gone on about them loads in previous videos, like, they're really not... It's as if they're written for if you already know a lot about it already. My plan is to sort of fiddle with buttons on the controller and things and just see if this thing fires up. I've been sitting here fiddling with it for half an hour or something like that. Can't get it working, like, it's on and I'm doing the same things I was this morning but it doesn't seem to be sort of engaging. The only thing that I noticed that's different is that the touch screen, this thing here, it's flickering quite a bit. So what I did was I jiggled the little pack of AA batteries and it flickered some more, went off, went on. So I think the connections in here are still not good. I think dirty connections are still there. So I'm going to have to redo those. Some sandpaper taped onto the end of a Sharpie. I think that's the only thing that will actually work on this because I've got to try and get all the way into the end there.
Right, I have cleaned the battery terminals. I have unplugged everything and plugged it all back in again. I'm really not sure what the problem is. A couple of things I can think of. One, the terminals are still not right. The screen is still flickering a little bit, so it could still be the terminals. The AA batteries are brand new, so it's not that. The only other thing apart from that is that I'm just missing something fantastically obvious. It's new to me, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm deciphering the cryptic instructions. The, okay, they're not that bad, but they make sense once you read them, I don't know, three or four hundred times? So, I've got a Dremel at the house. I don't know why it's at the house, it should be here. But I'm gonna sort of do the little terminals there. I'll take a couple of pieces of the jet turbine back with me, but I'm not gonna take the whole thing back. So, this could be it for today. It might have to wait another day. As it turns out, the Dremel tool wasn't at the house after all. It's been here for weeks, and the day I need it, is the day my father takes it in the car with him. So I couldn't send the terminals on the power pack thing. I did do something else though. Do you remember the other day where I talked about making an upgraded version of that thing? Well, right now, I have just ordered some titanium for that project. Oh yes, it's going ahead. I just ordered two meters of 15 mil by 15 mil titanium and two meters of 20 mil by 20 mil titanium. The whole lot cost $386.20. This isn't gonna be a cheap project. But it's gonna be a damn good project, that's for sure. So what I'm gonna do now is go back into town, to the workshop, and try and get this damn turbine going again. Very fortuitous timing there. My dad's just come back from Tauranga where he was at the new workshop. He had the Dremel in his car, so I've got that now, which means I can now Dremel out the battery connections on the, the AA battery pack, because I, I still think there's an issue. You know, at the house, the screen was still flickering. The battery thing made no difference. The screen is still flickering, so plowed on regardless. I fiddled around a bit more. I made one more change, and that was on the receiver, you have, you've got different channels. Like the receiver can take one, two, four channels. Now I had it on channel one, and I thought, let's just try channel two. And so I put on channel two, set up the radio again through the, you know, the ECU and whatnot, and I think that's it. Check this out. So just, I don't know if you knew this, I didn't know this, but even though we've got this little panel here, the little display unit, it's called the GSU, ground station unit, something like that, that's just for setting it up. Like you plug that in when setting it up. And so when you send this jet engine off up into the sky, if you're putting it in a, like a, a jet plane or something like that, which I'm not, I'm putting it on a skateboard, remember? But you basically connect it up to set it and then you, t you take it away and everything, Everything is controlled via this. So listen to this. I'll pull the trigger. So that is the noise of the starter motor starting to go. Possibly the glow plug going on. I can't quite remember the sequence that it does. But the main noise there was the pump, starting to pump paraffin through. So I think it was priming itself. Now I'm not sure if it does prime itself all the way or do I have to sort of prime it and put fuel through? I'm not sure, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I'll show you how it works. The controller here, basically I just pull the trigger on it and it starts at sort of like initiation boot up sequence. It's quite automated actually. So, trigger on.
just see it, mate. Right, so I don't know how that came through in the video for you there, but I was, you know, putting the revs up. I never gave it full revs, but because the screen now isn't working, I can't see the I can't see the RPM that it's doing. But I think it was certainly up at a hundred thousand RPM there. Now I've learned a very very valuable lesson here, and that is, you can see the drone, yeah, the drone, you, you can see the turbine there, and all the way over there is the sink. Now, when I go over to the sink here, you see how far away this is, it's about four meters, something like that. The sink is hot. Do not, repeat, do not run a turbine indoors. Judging by what's been taken from the, the, the bottle of kerosene, we've used about 200 milliliters just in that little bit of running. Like we've only run it like not even a minute in total now. And yeah. It rips through the fuel, that's for sure. Okay, can't resist it. Gonna have another go. There's one thing I'm not quite sure about, and that's, there's a sequence, there's like a cool down sequence, and apparently the turbine or the motor is meant to keep spinning once the engine is shut down, and you know, just, just cool it down, because it gets up, up to 900 and something odd degrees centigrade. Unbelievable. That's the idling temperature. As it speeds up, it goes down to about five or 600, so the, the, the faster it runs, the cooler it is. I don't hear anything coming on when we, you know, when I shut the engine down, there's no fans. The compressor, what they call the compressor, the spindle in the middle, isn't running. And I see smoke, and so, you know, I'm just getting the compressed air, I'm blasting it through for a couple of minutes, just to make sure. I'm gonna to have to find out if there's something wrong with the cool down sequence or not. Don't want to damage the engine. You know, this has been an awesome day. If you've been following the last few days, you'll know that, like, it's been sort of, failure after failure of trying to get this jet turbine to go. And you know, quite possibly, all those failures made getting the engine going today that much better. So, feeling pretty good, to be honest. Like, it's good to sort of get it on the go and know that it's not just like a few thousand dollars sitting there, you know, and it's not working. But what I'm gonna do today is leave you with a quote that doesn't tie in too well with today's video, but it's a very, very powerful quote, very powerful. It's by Robert Schuller, and he said, what would you attempt to do if you knew you would not fail?